the world's biggest story. The royal family. So today I thought I would show you a little post-Christmas haul video of something kind of silly and kind of crazy neat that Patrick got for me. Um, this is by far, um, this is, what, this is basically a glorified stocking stuffer because we always try to give each other, um, random things. And he found this for me. Um, like every good American, I get my, um, royal family news from TV, <laughs> Netflix, The Crown, things like that. Don't judge. Um, and we just finished watching The Crown. I actually didn't like the, I, I enjoyed the whole show, but quite honestly, I liked the earlier seasons better, and I know everyone was excited for the Diana seasons, but I liked the old, the, fir the first, um, the start much, much better. But anyway, he came across these, and these are basically trading cards, and I've never seen them before, he'd never seen them before, and I'm dying of curiosity. This is a giant pack. There are 50 packs of cards. Each pack has 13 cards, and there are 10 foil stamped cards. And these are all in association with a company called Press Pass. And I looked it up, and I think it's like, you know, reported by Liz Smith. I'm not really sure who she is. And I, quite honestly, neither Patrick nor I have any clue what these are really all about. So I'm really curious to open some of these and share them with you. Um, they're not particularly um, valuable. I think he told me that this whole um, giant set was like nine or ten dollars. And I don't know if you can see the side there. These are from 1993, so it's before um, Diana's tragic accident. Thank goodness, because that would be in terrible, terrible taste. So I'm going to pull out a section of these if I can. And there's supposed to be 110 different cards. I calculated that there should be like 630 or something like that. I can't remember exactly cards in this whole box. So I feel like there's a complete set in here somewhere. The world's biggest story. Reported by Liz Smith. Collect all 10 randomly inserted foil stamp cards. Stunning photos, illustrations, facts, and fun. Plus exclusive stories featuring Princess Diana, Prince Charles, and other royal family members. 1993 edition. So I guess they did these other years too. Really kind of odd and I'm to be honest with you I'm not a huge like some people are really really into the royal family a lot of Americans I can remember 
even when I was a kid, it was really, really popular for people to just be fascinated with the royal family. And I suppose it is fascinating to an extent. But I always wondered, like, what the huge draw for Americans was. So, I'm hardly a, you know, this is hardly my thing. But I did enjoy the crown. And, you know... I've been following the news and all of the things that have gone on to some extent. So, um, these were just kind of like silly fun. Hey, let's see. So, we have a checklist. And they actually have names. Look at these names. So, this is making this even more intriguing. Yipes, look at those stripes. Fergie scratch off. Oh, it's a scratch off. Is it really a scratch off? Vet me a Virgin Mary. Sandring Hound of Norfolk. This is going to be interesting. So, they have similar backs, and I read somewhere, I think it's on the back of the big box, that the chance of finding a foil stamped card is 1 in 13, so if there's 13 in each of these packs, then there should be a foil card in each one. Oh goodness, okay, so here we go, from penniless to prince. That's Philip. He was a refugee. And once again, I feel so, I feel like guilty that some of these things I only know because of the crown on Netflix. So, try not to judge me, but I will freely admit that I have learned um, the basics from this television show. And I know that there's a lot more to it than that. <laughs> So it's just a little fact about him. Pretty straightforward. William the Conqueror. Not sure what that's supposed to mean. Prince William, 10 year old scrappy heir to the throne, is known as Bill the Basher. His mother once turned him over her knee publicly at school. Tells like little tabloid tales. That's kind of what it seems like. They shoulda when they coulda. This is Margaret, yeah, Princess Margaret's. The love of Princess Margaret's love wouldn't deny her by the crown because she because he was divorced. Okay, so, so far, all of this kind of rings true. So these are like, almost like little profile cards, the Queen Mother. With stats on the back. I don't, oh wait, there's a foil, no, it's not a foil card, it's just like a black and white. Is that the foil that they're talking about? No, there's a fortune teller card, I saw that on here. Somewhere. These are so silly, y'all. They are very, very silly. Yeah, there's like fortune cards. Oh boy. Well, 
I wonder if they could have predicted what's going on with him right now. <laughs> oh, let's see. Duke of York. Darling, what happens? You have love, lust, and luxury. Hmm. And your enlarged ego and need to control drove Darling Fergie out of the castle to cut Cape Breton. It's kind of hard to read because of the way it's designed. Okay. What's in the stars for Prince Andrew? Hmm. They could have never predicted what is going on with him right now. That's for sure. Or maybe they could have. <laughs> Centering him. So they have different types of cards. They have, you can kind of start to see all the different types. These are like little stories. A royal hero for the moment, once again. Hmm. He said he didn't like to party. Ah, the tongue twister. What's this? Queen Mary, wife of George V, mother of Queen, mom and granny to Queen Elizabeth, was born Princess May of Tech. Became Duchess of York like Fergie, Princess of Wales like Diana, and Queen. Say that five times quickly. Ties are here again. So this is basically like a big <clears throat> paparazzi um, collection. Like they found her on the beach, and they're just—it's like it, you know, just dishing gossip on these little cards. Who is this? It's all my fault. Dame Barbara Cartland remained discreet while her stepdaughter Diana was officially in happy wedlock to Prince. To Prince. No. Her oh goodness. Her step granddaughter. Wow. She looks like she's ready for a stage play with all that makeup on. So, yeah, these are a little biting. They're definitely not, and I mean, you can tell by the packaging, they look like. Um, a tabloid, so I'm sure they weren't meant to be 100% um, complimentary. So let's see what we have. Queen for every occasion. On the afternoon of her 45th wedding anniversary, Queen Elizabeth II watched her home and her castle ablaze. The 40-year-long, the 40-year longest reigning monarch in the 20th century has displayed forbearance and her many problems. Yeah, I guess if you're more familiar with the royal family and all of the stories, 
and perhaps just live in London, you'll be more familiar with all of the stories behind all of these. So apparently there was a fire. I think there was, was there a mention of that at some point. The Queen's Way. So this is a little gossip about the state of the queen and Philip's marriage. Her home is her castle. Girl can't have enough. These are just so crazy. It's like it goes between gossip and facts. Though the Queen's mum's crown holds the dazzling 108 carat and Kohinoor Co 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 diamond, a gem valued at an ice cool 9,300,000 pounds. They really blast me, Elizabeth. Two, please. Is this Margaret again? No, nope, Princess Anne, sorry. Princess Anne has two loves, children and horses. Her hippomania has won her many distinctions. Anne once said, when I appear in public, people expect me to neigh, grind my teeth, paw the ground, and swish my tail. At dinner, she once talked about horses to a man on her left in the entire night, ignoring the gent on her right completely. During coffee, she asked the hapless fellow, May I have a sugar, please? The young man put two lumps in his palm, offered them to the royal hippomania. Hippomania. Har har. So, I guess the lady on this, <clears throat> this Liz Smith, is she the one that's writing all of these little tidbits and this is reported by I wonder what she reported for it had to be tabloid oh. okay I'm getting ahead of myself hidden assets Queen Elizabeth claims not only a classic Hanoverian bosom what but an innate intelligence and sense of humor, all of which are revealed only by accident. So this is from the checklist, the Fergie scratch off. Now I am dying to scratch this off but I kind of want to wait to see if I have another one before I do. But then I'll never know. Let me think about it. I'll put this right here. I'll think about it. Oh, it's on the back. Um, a chagrined Duchess of York joined her favorite money man in suing Paris Match for millions of uh, millions over printing the infamous photos of the two compromising decisions. On the Riviera, they won, and the money went to charity. Oh boy. Oh, gossip. This is amazing. <laughs> Ooh, fortune card. These are, these cannot, these are just the fortune cards. I still haven't come across any of the foil cards. So they're one in 13 chances so far have not been very true. So, what's in the stars for Princess Anne? Her Royal Highness is a Leo. Your nature is to start at the top and sudden job offers may find you thinking about career opportunities at the castle. Your overloom 
Overblown, Leo pride and suppressed need to be center stage will thrive. Prince Philip will ask Charles to step aside, and since you're the apple of Papa's eye, you're his choice until young William comes of age. Your years of royal toil may pay off, and you could be the first divorced crowned head since Henry VIII. Of course, your mum may say, no way. That's not going to happen. Royal scandal. A snitch in time. Is this a type of card? This looks like a type, doesn't it? Princess Margaret peeked at Philip's interfering with her right to marriage. Mary, Mary squeaked to her sister Elizabeth all the latest gossip about Prince Philip's fun-loving ways with other women. Hmm. They kind of showed this in the show, too. A passion for fashion. all night with the prince was a reluctant partner. This rare moment of the royal couple enjoying the light fantastic shows Diana at her fashion best. So that was kind of one of the um, moments in the Netflix series that they really highlighted just because, you know, they've really been taking advantage of the popularity of Diana to push that show. Another little caricature. Camilla Gate. <laughs> the image of Prince Charles really pointed toward kingship shattered as the complete Camilla Gate tapes were published. So apparently he had purchased some kind of portable phone. How it had to have been like a satellite phone or something. Wow. Little caricature. Kind of matches the style of Fergie back there. Another passion for fashion. I know that um, people are often amused by the queen's choice of outfits. I think there was um, a time not that long ago where she had on a like lime green something and they were doing green screen stuff with it. It was kind of funny. And I have to admit like the, the outfits that she wears is nothing at all like what like the first lady wears. You know hats are really not a thing here. It's, it's, and like they are there either. We talked about how she's actually kind of thrifty. Okay. Dad's boys for a week almost. Look how cute they were. Their little outfits on. Uh, brave princess. Princes. <laughs> I was like, what? Um, brave princes William and Harry smiled through their hearts were breaking, having to spend their first Christmas apart from their mother, Princess Diana. Another passion for fashion. It's about the ring. Princess Di is among is unique among royals and showing no fear of wearing fake pearls and rhinestones on her public engagements. Most of Prince Charles's presents to her have been especially designed, but the magnific magnificent sapphire, sapphire and diamond engagement ring from Gerard, the crown jewelers, 
was bought ready-made from a choice of eight rings brought to Balmoral Castle. They shared that scene. <laughs> Y'all are going to get tired of me and be like, that was in the crown. So, for the most part, so far, these are Somewhat respectful, if not just gossipy. Gosh, there's a lot of these cards, you guys. Any duplicates, but I still don't have a foil card. Let the Fergie out of the ashtray. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth took quite an initial shine to her new daughter in law, Sarah Ferguson. Fergie was an excellent writer, and the two women enjoyed each other's company on horseback. Sarah also presented the Queen with amusing and unusual gifts like the ashtray with a spinning top that made the ashes disappear. As the queen does not smoke, she used it as a biscuit dish for her beloved corgis who follow her everywhere. <laughs> Perhaps she's now trying to use the ashtray to make Fergie disappear. Oh. Oh, Prince Edward, the one they don't talk about very much. Be a virgin, Mary. A variety of Charles's past lovers were sent to have formed a social committee to vet virgins for the rich king. Oh boy. That's kind of funny. Queen Elizabeth's penchant for dowdiness, boxy outfits, unfashionable glasses, and clunky handbags drives designer Hardy Amy's to lament. I wish she was more of a close person. She listens and then wears whatever's comfortable. Her ubiquitous purse is a talisman for the monarchy, and though empty, is more functional than anyone suspects. At lunch or dinner, it is hooked beneath the queen's place setting. When picked up, it is a signal that the queen is changing the scenery and that coffee and liquors are to be served in the drawing room. Hmm. I always kind of wondered, like, I actually asked Patrick this question out loud when we were watching the show. Like, she always has her purse. Couldn't someone else hold that stuff for her? <laughs> you know? Like, she has a, an incomplete entourage. I would be like... Somebody else deal with this purse. The prince is not amused. I got a cat who wants my attention. Don't look down now. Another bit of gossip. Oh, here we have the fortune teller card for Prince Edward. Chameleon-like, you are a master of disguise, not knowing what you want to do with your life. You are attracted to people who exploit your compassionate Piscean nature. Martial, well, you know, marital problems are not in your immediate future, but you may still embarrass your folks by lending the royal name to a health club that concentrates more on massage from your beloved than your beloved tennis. I think that's Andrew's territory, but whatever. Diana. It's supposed to be some kind of cute like Diana anecdotes, I think. Some kind of cute play on words. 
dianecdotes. Did I, did I say that right? So it's talking about some of her charity work. Princess Glucksburg. So it says, does Princess Dinah know her real name is Glucksburg? Twisted Family Tree. So I guess this is going back to the father-in-law in the Greek-Danish background. Schleswig Holstein Sondenberg Glucksburg. That is a that is a mouthful. My prince, my love. <clears throat> Fergie and Andrew's marriage. Description for disaster. And I remember, like, I remember Fergie and Andrew's marriage more than in Princess Die because I was just a little bit older then I was really young when they got married so I didn't remember that as much as I remember them and I remember she was always in the spotlight for being kind of rough around the edges but she was also very she didn't seem as royal another Fergie card Fergie fashion Duchess of Pork. Oh my gosh, that's so awful. So that wasn't very nice. Let's see. Oh my gosh, there's so many of these. I haven't gotten a single repeated card yet. Princess Diana portrait card with her stats. <laughs> Andrew and Fergie's wedding. I mean, these are just goofy. And they like take a picture, make a funny caption, and add some random story to the back of them. Oh, a repeat. First time. Oh, Diana's fortune. Ruled by the moon, home, family, material, and emotional security are everything. The bad times are over. You have proven a formidable opponent and prince not so charming will concede your every wish to see son William as king. Jupiter in Libra brings happiness to the home where you will reign as hostess. Jealousy of rivals is over and reason rules. Interesting. A little sad.
die anecdotes. This is Buckingham Palace's staff took 300. Oh, wait. Buckingham Palace's staff of 300 took three days to lay the tables for Diana's wedding reception and three days to clean up. Wow. This is talking about details from a book that talked about the divorce. Fergie and Andrew again. Who is this? Prince Charles, unlikely femme fatalis, 45, married and rather plain English country lady, but Prince Charles, the man who could be king, is so dotty about her that their secretly taped conversations could jeopardize his ascent to the throne. Okay. Oh, so that's supposed to be Camilla as a Rottweiler getting Diana. That's pretty funny. In sickness and in health, till the tabloids do us part. Wow, okay, so that was just, that was four packs. I have so many more of these to go, it's insane. This is quite entertaining though. I really wanna find a foil card. I was promised Foil cards. <laughs> Come on. Oh, another one of those crazy ones. Okay. It's another fortune card for Charles. says he'll forgive Diana. Buckingham Pounds. Kensington. This is old Edward again. that look. <laughs> that is a pretty, like, uh, frustrated look. It's a different style from the other It says, uh, Who's this supposed to be? This is on August 23rd, 1992, as Fergie slipped out a castle back door and apparently out of the royal family, the family was plunged into a new and even more unbelievably, unbelievable controversy. A London paper printed the details of an intimate bugged telephone conversation between the Princess of Wales and an admirer. The palace called it a fake, saying it was difficult to tell whether or not the voice belonged to Diana. What? The male caller, who nicknamed the Princess of Wales Squidgy, remained unidentified for all three days. Okay. Oh, that lady again. Let's 
see if we can make it through the rest of these packs so that I want to find a foil card. Starting to see some repeats. One of the most lamentable royal lapses leaked in it. Oh, oh gosh. I've heard that silly story too. It's kind of surprising too because these were back in 1993 and here I am in 2020 and a lot of these little stories I have heard recently um, so it just kind of goes to show you that these things kind of never die and I don't know so it's just kind of like regurgitated information The seven short televised sentences of Prime Minister John Major brought the eleven year marriage of Prince Charles, heir to the throne of the Queen of the Heir to the Throne of England and Prince Diana to the nth degree of separation. As their televised marriage was the wedding of the century, but their but they won't continue their public charade of togetherness. Charles once said, marriage is a commitment that one expects to last 50 years, but Diana countered, unfortunately, I kissed a prince who turned into a frog. Oh, okay. Maybe we'll figure out who this person is. This myth has been called everything from Godmother of Gossip to the good old gal, and is well liked as she is well read. Known for her grace, wit, and manners, Smith is at home at the party of the heart, is at home at a party in the heart of London, at a royal wedding in Monaco or in the American heartland. People always want to know the real story, and I like telling it. Smith said. The lifestyles of celebrities, royals, and our politicians are really not that much different from anyone else's. It's just more people care to know what's going on with them. I hope that people have as much fun reading these cards as I had while writing them. Interesting. Okay, box. You promised me eight foil cards by now. <laughs> Unless that's what they mean. So far I've seen like three different styles of caricatures. A now famous car salesman was identified as the voice on the Diana tapes. His girlfriend described the news as mind-blowing. Rumors had died dumping her security and meeting her gentleman in the Norfolk farmhouse. The palace flew into the Nile. There was no royal marriage crisis and Diana did not secretly meet with the man with all of those cars.
So these would be amazing for someone who is really into the the gossipy tabloidy part of this. I mean, this is basically like every bit of tabloid royal information, all kind of like into these little teeny tiny card tidbits. The delicacy of two prawns batter fried while kissing was offered to Princess Diane on what was her, the first official royal visit to Korea. Diana's eyes lit up when told that the dish was an aphrodisiac. Diane is plagued by the eating disorder, bulimia, and rarely eats in public, but she accepted a prawn and seemed to enjoy it. The delicacy is supposed to bring new happiness and love to couples. Immediately upon Diana's return to England, she told Queen Elizabeth she wanted separation. So much for charms. The little kissing prawns. So at this point, I'm assuming that when they say foil card, they mean this. I was thinking they might mean like, you know, something a little bit more, a little bit more flashy, but that's okay. So the card image has really nothing to do with the back of it. It talks about her different estates and wealth. And it just shows her in a very inopportune moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fred and Gladys. That was also in the crown. The man who would be king calls her Gladys, and she, in her best backstreet manner, calls him Fred. A gold bracelet from Charles to Camilla, inscribed F and G, was once intercepted by Princess Diana. In another incident, instance, Charles wore gold cufflinks, intertwined C's, Charles and Camilla, to a dinner for the late Anwar Sadat. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty bad. Vacation is terrificus. Like, what does that have to do with anything? These were very interesting. I hope you enjoyed seeing the strangest, the absolute strangest collection of trading cards ever. So if you enjoyed looking at these and you would like to see more, <laughs> please drop a comment and let me know and I'd be glad to open another stack of these for you. Um, I'm still really curious. I did not get another one of these. I think I should just scratch it off. What do you think? One second. It doesn't have a coin. Maybe this would be a little less harsh. There we go. Much better.
Okay, the scratch off reveals, as you can see, the little scene there. Now let's see. A chagrin Duchess of York joined her favorite money man in the suing Paris match for millions over printing the infamous photos of two compromising positions in the Riviera. Okay, so this must be making fun of one of the compromising positions. That's pretty funny. Probably one of the most unique scratch-offs I've ever seen. <laughs> so, that's the mystery. Hopefully I'll have another one too so I can have like one scratched and one not scratched. But, okay. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this and... If you'd like to see some more cards, just let me know and I will open some more packs. I'm really curious. What in the world? This is one of the strangest collections of, of um, trading cards I've ever seen in my life. Alright, thanks for watching guys. Bye.